Hello and welcome to this edition of Linux How To's. This week I will be showing how you can do video editing and conversion from the command line using FFmpeg. Now normally I dedicate a portion of each video to going through exactly how to install the program that I'll be using for the rest of the video. Unfortunately with FFmpeg this is a tall order. FFmpeg has the option of using up to around a dozen external libraries, all of which have to be installed separately and configured properly. I recommend using FFmpeg from your distribution's package repository for the sake of getting started easily. For one of the things I will be doing today, you will also need MJPEG tools, which you should be able to find in your distribution's package repository. The first thing we will need to get started is some footage. I asked a good friend of mine to provide some content, and she was kind enough to oblige. I captured the footage with my digital camcorder and saved it on my computer. Unfortunately, my camcorder saves all the video data as a QuickTime movie, of all things. Let's say we wanted to reformat this as a YouTube video. YouTube software will skip over re-encoding any video in FLV format with a resolution of 320 by 240 pixels and a bitrate of under 350 kilobits. So we'll need to convert this to FLV format and keep our bitrate within range. Here's the command to do this. So let's break this apart. It is important to remember that FFmpeg options always apply to the next file in the arguments list, regardless of whether it is an input or an output file. Hyphen i just defines the input file. Hyphen t is the amount of time we want to encode from the original video. To keep this how-to going at a steady clip, we're only going to be dealing with the first 6.8 seconds of the original video. Hyphen ar is the audio rate in cycles per second. Usually this is either 48,000, 44,100, or 22,050. A codec is the audio codec to use, in our case MP3 with the lame encoder. The options you have are listed by entering FFmpeg space hyphen format into the command line. My options are shown here. Hyphen AB is the audio bitrate, which is described in bits per second. In our case we are using 32,000 bits per second, which is abbreviated 32K. Hyphen R is the frame rate, which is usually 25, the PAL standard, or 29.97, the NTSC standard. Hyphen S is just the dimensions of the final video in pixels, width by height. V codec is the video codec. Again, the possibilities are listed with the hyphen format switch. And finally, Q scale is a quantization scale, which is basically a quality scale for variable bitrate encoding. Lower numbers indicate a higher quality. So let's run this and see how it looks. Now let's say that instead of resizing the video and dealing with distortion, we simply wanted to crop the video down to YouTube dimensions. In that case, we would use the following line. The crop top, crop bottom, crop right, and crop left switches define how FFmpeg will crop the video. Here's how I decide what each of the values would be. Assuming we want our cropping to be done equally on each side, we simply need to subtract the new dimension from the old dimension and distribute the difference equally between each side. Since our original width is 720, we need to crop 200 pixels off each side to get to 320. And since our original height was 480, we need to crop 120 off the top and bottom to get to 240. As you can see, this cropping did not work well for this picture because the action was not centered, so we'll be using the rescaled version for our target format. Suppose that instead of YouTube, this video was destined for DVD. FFmpeg makes converting to DVD format very simple with the hyphen target switch. For DVD, the NTSC hyphen DVD and PAL hyphen DVD targets are supplied. These switches set all the other necessary parameters for you, so you don't have to bother looking up the standard every time you need to encode a video. Since I'm in North America, I'm going to use the NTSC hyphen DVD target. And now my clip is ready to be burned to a DVD with a tool like Tuvid to be viewed on any compliant DVD playback device. For one final example, let's say we wanted to burn this clip to a DVD in widescreen letterbox format. The aspect ratio of the letterbox format is 16 to 9, so with a width of 720 pixels, our height will have to be 405. What we are going to do here is crop our original to 720 by 405, then pad the output with the color black. Cropping has to be done in multiples of two. So our example is going to be one pixel too high. All that means is one pixel will be shaved off the image during playback, which is not a big deal. Here's the line to accomplish this. 
The pad top and pad bottom switches do what you would expect them to do. The pad color switch accepts 24-bit color in hexadecimal RGB format, the same format used in HTML and CSS. Here is a list of common colors in hexadecimal format. Before I continue editing this video clip, I should mention that FFmpeg is capable of accepting input from sources other than pre-recorded files, such as video for Linux devices and X11 captures. From this point forward, I will use FFmpeg to do my screen captures. The invocation line I use for this is as follows. Now we need an introductory clip for our video. We have a picture of some curtains here and we want to turn them into a video clip with some spotlights. First, we need to convert the still image of the curtains to a 10 second video clip. The only new switch here is loop input, and it is rather self-explanatory, and necessary because the input file is only a single frame. Now, we want to put in our spotlights. Here's the still frame of our spotlight. I created this very easily in GIMP by taking a white circle and feathering the edges. I had a lot of fun coming up with the command to program the spotlights in. It might, in fact, be my favorite command ever. Take a look. Let's deconstruct this. Without the two V-hook switches, this is a very simple line and is self-explanatory at this point. So let's take a look at one of the V-hook switches. Notice that the V-hook arguments are enclosed in single quotes. This is so that the shell knows to send all the information unaltered to the V-hook filter and not FFmpeg directly. The first V-hook argument is the path to the module that we'll be using. The hyphen I at the end is just the path to the picture of our spotlight. That leaves two switches, hyphen X and hyphen Y, and those are just functions to describe the horizontal and vertical motions of the spotlight. If you've ever played around with the graphing calculator, this should be familiar territory for you. B-hook supplies several variables that can be very helpful, the most important of which is N, which is set to the frame number of the movie, beginning with zero. Here are the other variables that V-hook supplies. V-hook also supplies several mathematical functions, which are listed here. If you notice, all the functions I came up with are basically altered sign functions, and this is because I wanted the spotlights to bounce back and forth from two points, which the sign function does. The other numbers I came up with, mostly from testing ideas out and seeing how they looked when the movie was rendered. The best way to become acquainted with how these switches work is to play around with them yourself. Now, we need the curtain to rise, so we want a still image from the footage to be behind the curtain. We can extract that image with the following command. The hyphen ITS offset is the number of seconds into the film we want to extract our still image. V frames stands for the video frames and must be set to 1 because we want a still image. V codec is set at PNG because we'll be extracting a PNG image. Now, we want to extend this still frame into a movie. We already know the command for that and it's shown here. And we're going to use V-hook again to superimpose the curtain rising. Our actual footage is very short, so we're going to put it into slow motion to make it longer. Here's a great way to do this using YUV FPS and pipes. The first part of this pipe converts the video to a raw format that can be piped to the standard output signified by the hyphen. YUV FPS is a program that is designed to change the frame rate of a video without changing the timing, but it can be convinced to change the timing with the hyphen S switch. This switch forces YUV FPS to assume the frame rate of the input video. If the input frame rate, signified by hyphen S, and the output frame rate, signified by hyphen R, are the same, then YUV FPS will not try to correct the timing of the video at all. Essentially, this command will change the frame rate of the video and change the timing accordingly. Since the original frame rate was 29.97, changing the frame rate to 15 will cut the speed of the video about in half. In the final step in the pipe, FFmpeg accepts the standard input in format YUV4MPEG pipe and converts it to YouTube size, MPEG2 video, and our standard frame rate of 29.97. The video is now correctly sized and half speed. Now we have three videos that need to be joined together for the final production. There was actually a reason we were working with MPEG videos, and that is that MPEG videos can be concatenated together without needing to be re-encoded. The command to join the videos, therefore, is trivial. 
And finally, we need to paste in a soundtrack. This is also very simple. All we need to do is specify the two input files, and FFmpeg will provide the correct mapping automatically. And now our video is finished. We took some very basic footage to begin with, and using only command line utilities, we were able to create something more visually interesting. Clearly, there are some things that are better done with a non-linear editor like Cinelera, but there are other things that are better done with FFmpeg, and I hope I was able to show you that today. Thanks for watching.